United States' ability to make solar arrays is embryonic, but it's, you know, it's actually not that far behind China's, right? It's maybe five years behind. If, if we decided we want to produce 100 gigawatts of solar capacity every single year... We're already on track to do that. Okay. Is it going to be as cheap as it is to do in China? Um, my, my views on this are somewhat different from the mainstream, okay. which is great because this is a <laughs> podcast. Um, so the mainstream view would say, well, China has cheaper labor, which is no longer true uh, because they compared to Mexico, uh, and it's got lower environmental regulations, uh, which is true, um, and that it is more business friendly, which is absolutely crazy. I've never heard, like, there's, there's no way you could justify that, like, your company having to have, like, a like an uh, inspector from the CCP on its board who like harasses you about Xi Jinping every day, like helps you do your business. Um, and, and also like the rule of law is not great. So like you're constantly having to pay bribes to people in order to stay in business, right? The idea that the United States cannot compete against that with like mostly or fully automated solar panel manufacturing in the United States, which has cheaper natural gas by far, abundant oil, abundant human resources, great financial capacity, you know, world leading automation, et cetera, et cetera. It's crazy. Like we could literally copy paste so- solar manufacturing factories. How much additional... Solar power capacity do you think we could be putting on that's manufactured in the U.S. by 2028? This is a good question. Uh, when Russia invaded um, Ukraine, um, I thought, ah, finally, the Europeans will see sense. And they'll like pull the trigger on like, we need to localize production of solar panels from dirt to the finished module, which is like a roughly a four-stage right. process. Um, they didn't. Uh, so they're still paying Russia like a billion dollars a day uh, for the privilege of being invaded. But at the time, I thought they could probably do that in about two years. And I think the United States could probably do that in two years or less if you started today. Like, it's currently 11 o'clock. So, like, <laughs> we're going to start cutting checks by noon. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think you could you could ramp up pretty quickly. A lot of technology already exists here. It's not like it has to be re- invented from scratch. It's mostly a case of, like, putting in phone call to all the different manufacturers here in Germany and so on and saying, we need you to 10 exercise your factory Starting today, blank check, go. I guess a lot of your predictions seem to be not predictions, but more like if we had World War II levels of motivation, if we had Manhattan level project level intensity around doing a specific thing, how fast could we do it? Uh, which is like an Elon, like if Elon was running the government, how fast could it happen? Versus it was for for a brief period. So there. maybe maybe then we should put it like if Elon ran the government like he ran SpaceX, as opposed to the question of like, okay, what is actually practically likely to happen given that yes. we are not treating it with okay World War II level intensity. So if you look at XAI, which Elon is involved in, obviously, <laughs> what are they what are they actually focused on right now? Right, they're focused on the chips, right? Because they understand like the key bottleneck is the chips, not the solar power, right? right? Because even if Trump puts in a 200% tariff on Chinese solar, right? And we're not able to bypass it via like Vietnam or something. It's still a bargain. It doesn't matter. Like if you, if you need solar to run your data center, it's, it doesn't hurt on t- in terms of the overall cost picture. It doesn't matter at all. Right. What matters is having the chips at a com- like competitive capacity, uh, you know, competitive uh, capabilities per chip and enough of them, you know, installed in your PCBs, in your data centers, hooked up to your liquid cooling, ready to go, right? And that's actually something that, that you know, Elon and his companies are great at. It's like figuring out this mass production, semi-automated mass production. They've got this um, facility in Texas, which is making the um, Starlink receivers completely mm-hmm. automated. But like, at what point does like, oh, we don't have a solar panel factory become on the critical path, right? I very much doubt it's ever going to be on the critical path. Mm-hmm. There's dozens and dozens of manufacturers of solar panels worldwide that are all competing against each other. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.